Greetings. Today I'd like to uh, I'd like to talk a little bit about a feature within Recon NG that uh, I find very very interesting uh, at, at times entertaining and also at times pretty scary, and uh, that is the the feature the feature set of push pins, a location to push pins modules, or 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 the the integration of the tool formerly known as push pin. So uh, some quick background information on this. It was originally an idea that was that was. Uh, Created by John Strand a couple of years back, um, and then a POC was originally written by Ethan Robish that essentially took geotagged data from different resources and then plotted them on a map so that you can conduct an analysis of of where these pieces of data were created. Um, so this is kind of interesting. The POC was was uh, you know caught a little bit of attention, and and John pretty much came to me and said, Hey, I want you to perfect this. So I created a the pushpin script out of it. Um, and then eventually migrated that into Recon NG, uh, and that's what we're going to cover today. But basically, this is all made possible because of a because of something called geotagging. So, what is geotagging? Well, very quickly, geotagging is when a piece of media is created by a device that is capable of determining its own location. It will tag that particular piece of made of of, uh, of media with uh, with that location, with the location of, of when it was created within that media's metadata, um, and then what happens is, is say when you when you tweet or when you take a picture and upload it somewhere or uh, or uh, or a video or whatnot, that metadata, that location, that geotag gets sent to the resource. Uh, or to the uh, to that third-party resource with your piece of media, and what a lot of these resources do is, is they will strip out that location data, that geotag, and they will actually store it in the database with the other information about that particular media and make it searchable through a web interface, through an API, or uh, any number of locations. Okay, so basically what Pushpin does is it says, hey, okay, here's all these different resources that actually make their information searchable by geotags. And so what we've done is, is we've tapped into these APIs, we've we've written parsers to, to scrape the web pages so that we can go out, search according to location, and then bring back and map all of this all of this media on a map for you so that you can kind of see where these things uh, come came about. Um, so it's got obviously have some nefarious use cases. Um, this uh, you know it's very stalker-ish from uh, from you know if, you're, if it's the first time you've ever been exposed to it. However, that's not the reason why it was built. There was two purposes why it was built. Number one was to introduce the the possibility that we may able to, we may be able to conduct some physical reconnaissance or some level of physical reconnaissance with ever with ever actually having to be on the ground at the particular location. The second purpose for this was to build associations through geographical relationships. Okay, so two individuals, say you got a person outside, uh, you got a person that's tweeting in the parking lot of the National Security Agency, something along the lines of, well, going to work today. Well, you now have identified that that person is probably an employee of the National Security Agency. So it allows us to begin to build build associations based on these geographical relationships between the pieces of media. Okay, so today we're going to demo this functionality. And I want to cover a couple different modules in Recon NG that do this. But the first thing we need is the location of a target. Okay. Well, let's go out here. Let's say we're going to target the NSA today. All right. So let's go to Google and ask it for NSA's address. So address, the National Security Agency. And Google is nice enough to give it to us right on this really big banner at the top of the screen. So let's go ahead and copy that. Now let's come back here and let's actually select our uh, our uh, our NSA workspace there we go and now let's if, we, if we've looked at the locations table before in the last video if we look at the locations table actually show schema come up here look at the locations table you'll see that the street address is a column within the locations table. So that's a piece of data that we can use as input for a module. So let's take that street address we have and let's add it. So remember the add command, add locations. We'll go past latitude, past latitude, paste, paste in the address, and hit enter. And now we have 
and now we have a street address. So how do we get the latitude and longitude from this? Well, let's load a geocode module. So I've got a couple of geocode modules in here. The first one is just geocode. The other one's reverse geocode. So what geocode does is it takes an address and it turns it to the latitude and longitude. Uh, reverse geocode takes the latitude and longitude and turns it into an address. All right, so we have an address. So let's go ahead and use this module right here. It's our standard geocode module. And let's run it. Well, first I'll show you the options. Not much going on there. We run it and it brings back and gives us our latitude and our longitude. Okay, so now what can we do with this latitude and longitude? We now have a location and if we do a search for things that start with location, actually, dash has got to be on the other side, right? Dash. We'll see that you have these geocode modules, but then you also have all of these pushpin modules, and this is what we're going to cover today. All right, so we have these pushpin modules, and we want, and these are essentially the resources that are parsing out that geotag data and making the and making their uh, their their content, so to speak, searchable according to to that particular data. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to search each one of these each one of these uh, each one of these resources according to the location that we harvested and then we're going to pull down those pieces of media that are associated with that okay so let's go ahead and start loading some of these up we'll load Flickr first and just to kind of show you an option and most of them look the same most of them have just a radius option and then a source option obviously the default for the shore source is going to be the latitude and longitude from the locations table, but you could pass it in a list or you could give it a single location. There's a couple of different ways to do it. However, here we're going to use the database. Let's, radius of one is fine. Let's just go ahead and run it. We see it shows us the location and it goes out and starts collecting photos from Flickr based on that location. Next we'll load Picasa and we'll run it. get some of those we'll load Shodan and we'll see there's more than one Shodan one so let's go ahead and and use our smart load features and we'll run this now Shodan is going to time out uh, you typically have to extend the timeout for up to about 60 seconds for this to work I talked to the developer of Shodan API and he said the geo searches take a good bit of time to actually go through and conduct and so you will need to extend the timeout to actually get information back from it. Uh, we'll see here that the, the request is going to time out. But the bottom line is, is it's doing the same thing there. It's going out and it's grabbing geotagged uh, services and systems that Shodan is aware of. Um, so we'll go ahead and just cancel that out, uh, at timed out for us. Okay, next is uh, we got Twitter. So load recon. Pushpin Twitter. There's a couple Twitter modules. So make sure I got the right one. We'll run it. And we see we've got some new ones there. And what's the final one? YouTube. Load YouTube. And we'll run it and we'll get it. Okay. So now if we go to show dashboard here, we can see we've got our summary, uh, the one location we put in there. And then we've harvested 647 push pins associated with the one location that's in our locations table. Okay, so this is good information. Now let's see what some of these push pins are. Oh my goodness, this is a terrible way to view this data, right? I mean, this data looks practically unusable uh, in an ASCII table form. We've got to have a better way to see this, and this is where the push pin reporting comes in. So here we load a reporting push pin. And we have the pushpin reporting module. Let's show the options here because there are a couple of options we need to talk about. You'll see that uh, there is a latitude, longitude, and radius option that are all required but not filled out with the default value. Now this is important, um, not necessarily for the actual data that's going to go on the map, but the way it looks. So the latitude and longitude is going to establish where the center of the map is on the screen when you load it. And then the radius is going to be uh, that nice little grayed out circle out from the center of the map that kind of gives you uh, a, a radius um, from where you searched. And so let's go ahead and set these. I need to uh, show locations because I want to get this set in the right place. So let's uh, set latitude to this. And we'll set longitude to this. 
set radius to one. Show I'll make sure we got them set. We do. And let's go ahead and run it, and we'll see that it has created our our two uh, HTML reports for us. So if we go here, let's load up the media, the media one first, and you'll see you have a nice little layout here of uh, different columns with the data in it. And it looks like it's taking a bit to to load the Twitter stuff. We'll give it a minute. But as you can see here, now we're starting to see data in a useful format, and it is and it is sorted chronologically. So the most recent ones are at top, and you've got Flickr images, you've got Picasso images, you've got tweets, and you've got YouTube videos, all from the area. Okay, so, pretty, so that's pretty helpful, right? But it's not the best way to view this data. It's not the original purpose we created the pushpin tool. That's what the map report was. And so let's go here and let's look at the map. As you can see is now we have a nice interface with a Google map that shows us all the pieces of data that we've actually pulled down. Now if we go over here to satellite view, you'll see that oh, here's the National Security Agency and here's the headquarters and we've got various tweets and things around in the parking lot that we can look at. Um, all kinds of different stuff. Flickr images that appear to come from within the building itself. YouTube videos that appear to come from within the building itself. Uh, the green dot is the center. That's the epicenter of the map. That's what that's the the, the cross section of the latitude and longitude that you gave it when you went to report. Just lots of interesting information. And you can begin to click through this information and start looking at these where the where the where the information is located, where it came from, where the person was at when they actually uploaded the media, and begin to create associations between people uh, and places and things. Uh, one of the really interesting things about the new version of, of, of Pushpin, at least the integration into Recon NG, is that now, since all the information is stored in the database, rather than just run the script, run the script and getting one snapshot in time for all that information, you can start to create a historical record. So you can actually use some of the scripting functionality within the framework to run these modules every 5, 10, 15 minutes, every day, every, every week, whatever you want to. You can have these things ran and it keeps a historical record of all the data in the database and so that when you run this report like this you'll see everything for as long as you've been collecting data um, from those particular locations. So that is the pushbin portion of ReconNG. Once again, I hope you enjoy it. And uh, if any of you are, are, are familiar or know of other resources that allow us to search by Geotag Media, please hit me up on Twitter at Landmaster53 so that we can add those modules into the framework. Enjoy and have a great day.